because that's the whole thing about it. Like I wanted to, to connect again with my community from back home and talk. Richard Forte presents. Ladies and gentlemen, we are rolling for Richard Forte number seven. And I have with me today somebody that I personally just adore, but he's also professionally somebody I extremely respect. His name is Bernardo de Villa. He's all the way from Brazil here in North Bay. Um, he's been here a couple years now. I can't believe it's already been a couple years. Almost three, yeah. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Bernardo, <laughs> you made it. Yeah, I did. And you're back Thanks on the Richard. Me. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's my pleasure. I'm so happy you're back in town. Yeah. You've been on quite the journey recently, haven't you? Oh yeah, I've moved back like two or three months ago. Yeah. After being in Toronto, yeah. I think we should give everybody the good news about your residency because you ended mm -hmm. up being mm -hmm. in Canada, going to Canada or college, studying in their post-production program yeah. there. And now you finish that and the big mission was to get your residency. Yeah. And you achieved it. Oh yeah. like. Uh, First of April, <laughs> April first, I got like the news that I. Congratulations! Yeah. Tell me about that process. Was it hard? Easy? Challenging? Uh, fun? It's a lot of work, a lot of documents, a lot of like. I had to start collecting documents and doing things one year before actually coming to Canada, and then after I got here, it was one year studying, one year of a temporary work visa and then applied to permanent residence and waited like almost eight months to get a reply because of COVID. So it was a really long process, like four years or something. Yeah. But you made it. I did, I did, like, yeah, it's finally. And now yeah. you're officially a permanent resident of yeah. Canada, which means you can go visit back home. Exactly, exactly. It's just waiting on the vaccine. Yeah. You can go back. Awesome. Yeah. So give me a little bit the journey since you've graduated, because now you were in Toronto for a little stint, you're back in North Bay. Um, I want to know how you've been surviving this damn pandemic. How are you getting through it? Yeah, so the, the beginning of the pandemic was hard, like really hard because I wanted to go back home. I had plans already to go back home and I couldn't. And then, I don't know, I was just really worried about my family and uh, I don't know, like my friends that were here in North Bay moved to other towns, other cities. So I was like, no, I'm stuck here. I felt like really stuck. Yeah. So, and I wanted to, I don't know, do change, but I really couldn't do. Yeah. So what I did actually was start working more on hobbies and personal things and it helped me a lot. And start of the pandemic, I started doing music yeah. and like, doing music, uh, DJ sets and things like that and it was great and now like six months ago it all started streaming live streaming on Twitch so and that was like the best thing I could have done so that's how I so what's your Twitch name it. what's your what's <laughs> it's your... Shaman Surreal yeah Shaman Surreal on yeah. Twitch ladies and gentlemen you want to check this out especially if you're into video gaming and especially if you understand Portuguese exactly it's all in <laughs> Portuguese because that's the whole thing about it like I wanted to to connect again with my community from back home and talk in my so language. tell me about yeah. the the experience of putting yourself out there and what that's been like it's it's crazy at the start it was really really hard but then you started like getting used to to being a camera all the time and now my approach is like, I don't have filters, <laughs> basically, that's my approach. How, because I want people to come and interact with me, like, and tell me everything about like their day or how they're feeling and really like connect on a personal level. So in order for them to do that, I also do, do it mm -hmm. as well. So I'm also like telling things about my day or telling things. Yeah, you're sharing Just, your life. Exactly. And exactly. you have a global community because you're broadcasting to anybody who can watch from anywhere, anytime. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and people love it, especially because it's different, because I'm in a different country, so I can also like show things that uh, that they don't know or they never thought about. So it's a pretty sure. good experience for 
everyone. Yeah. What's been the big lesson learned since you started streaming and doing that? I mean, let's give people an idea of what we mean when we say you're streaming. Okay. How much yeah. time are you spending streaming? Oh, a lot, a lot. Now, now I'm like seven, eight hours a day, basically every day, every night, actually. But when I started, I was so into it and I had nothing going on because it was winter, peak COVID in Toronto. So I was inside all the time. So I would do it like for 12, 13 hours. It was crazy, crazy. But that's how you really grow because people want someone that's always there, you know. Yeah, it's the so consistency. It's the consistency for putting sure. Putting in the time. Yeah. You yeah. also put in a lot of work with your brand. You have a great brand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... I, I've worked a lot in it because I know yeah. how it's important to show that you really mean it, right? That you're professional, yeah. For sure. Are you still uh, doing some uh, awesome playlists? I personally <laughs> love the type of music you like, the deep house, melodic, vocal. Uh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Music. No, I've been updating all my playlists. So I where do people find listen. your playlist and want to get onto the good music you're on to? How do we find you? Where do we listen to that uh, So... On Spotify, I have like three or four playlists, but one of them is like the most famous one because Deep House. Yeah. It's uh, the Villa's best Deep House, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also on SoundCloud, where I have some UG sets and some music of my own. It's uh, the Villa. So, yeah. Yeah, the name there. Since we're telling people where to find you, why don't we give them your website also and, and sure. t tell them what they can find there and why they might go find your website to hire you. Yeah, my website's bernardodevilla.com mm -hmm. and it has like my portfolio, my work with videos and things I shot or so edit or collaborate, yeah. Let's talk about that. So we've got Bernardo the DJ, we've <laughs> yeah. got Bernardo the live streamer, we've got Bernardo the video editor, shooter, yeah. Uh, yeah. color correction, everything post-production. Yeah. Are you doing any of that stuff anymore? Are you like looking for work for these things? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing contracts with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're working here. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm definitely looking. I mean, I, right now, I, I don't really want to dedicate 100% like full time yeah. for it. Cause yeah, cause I, I'm really investing in my hobbies right now, but yeah, not hobbies, but like my personal projects yeah. right now. Yeah. So, but I'm, I definitely, yeah, I'm definitely still in the game. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. So talk to me about life in Canada compared to Brazil. Totally different. You, life, you're you're yeah, living totally in a city different. of 50,000 people. Yeah. Right now. Your city back home is? Like 16 million or something. It's <laughs> crazy. It's like insane. Right. Yeah. So when was the last time you were home? Oh, um, almost two years ago. That's yeah. crazy. That's really crazy. Yeah, I know. I miss it like every day. I really want to see my family yeah, and my I'm friends. Yeah, I'm sure you miss them. Um, For sure. So what have you learned about Canada in the last two years that you didn't know before? Oh, that's a hard question. To Too big? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and I don't want to say like... You don't want to be negative? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want to sound negative. No, there's a lot of good things. Well, you like, chose to live and live in, live here and be a permanent resident. So yes, there's some yeah, good. Of course. We of know course, there's good. Oh, no. Okay. The best... Okay. There are two best things here. It's security, for sure. For yeah. me, that's the most different like, thing. Yeah. Because people don't really know, but Brazil is really, really violent, especially Rio. And... Uh, yeah, to like I have so many stories with violence, so yeah. I don't know if you get into that. But like here, it's like I feel I can walk with my headphones at night and things like that. It's impossible to do in Brazil. Yeah. So that's the main thing for me. And the second thing is how people, uh, the work like is value, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you work eight, nine, ten hours a day, and you're you can have like your own apartment, and you can yeah. get you know like. Uh, the quality of life is way better there to, in order to live alone and to yeah. have a decent quality of life. You have to work a lot and have a, g a great job yeah, and yeah. things like that. So it's way harder. Yeah. So I like that here. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I also what I like about North Bay is being close to nature, small town. People know each yeah. other. That's the good part for sure. Yeah. Especially during a time where you don't have all the freedoms anyways. Yeah. So you might as well yeah. have space. 
of course. And we definitely have a lot of space. Yes. We were on a job just last week and we were driving an hour and a half to get there and it's like the next town over. Yeah. And we were laughing about how most people don't understand the scale and the scope of how big the land mass is here. Compared to most people, most people live in pretty cramped Oh yeah, yeah. City lives, yeah. Oh yeah, no, here everything's spread out, like super spread out. Not only in, in the city, but like between the city and the others, like there's nothing. While back home is like buildings and houses yeah. everywhere, everywhere. What do you notice yeah. is different in the media? The media we consume, the media we can create compared to the media Brazilians create and consume. Is there a difference? In terms of like, style broadcasters yeah. or no, more in internet or like style how you work what people like where people are at in terms of how what type of videos they share what type of thing works in brazil compared to the types of thing that work because you had 10 years of working experience yes. Yes. in media production in brazil that people might not know so you've worked in the industry there as well you came here you trained and now you're working in the industry here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to give people some insight into how the industry could be different, the entertainment industry and your experience mm. of producing videos, how that might have been different between here and there, or if there is any difference. I, I'm not really into like watching TV or here, but I think one of the main differences is that things here are more serious, like, you know, more like, uh, while in Brazil, square. yeah, square. And while in Brazil, people love when when they are authentic or they say weird things. Yeah, ridiculous. And ridiculous, and like co completely out of fun loving. Exactly, doesn't take exactly. themselves so seriously. No, that definitely not. Like, and and people love seeing how um, other people behave. It's almost like because. For instance, like the the most watched show there, and it's already in this fifth, uh, 21st or 22nd season's Big Brother in Brazil. Okay. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. Like people love watching other people behaving and like other people's, people's lives and things like that. Yeah. It's, it's way more on a personal yeah, level yeah. than like just which, serious people talking about. You know? Sure, which, which translates to what you're doing with the streaming. Exactly, exactly. The streaming is very popular in Brazil also, if, I guess it's because of that. So, you're doing the streaming. Talk to us a little bit about the music, though, because I noticed mm -hmm, when I've tuned mm -hmm. into your stream that you always have great music going on in the background. Oh yeah, because that's the kind of music I like, the electronic music, and I always put in on the background playing. So, yeah. do you put your playlists on the background of when you stream? How does it work with copyright and with like streaming mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. through platforms like that? Yeah. So uh, there's been there's been a lot of com like it's it's getting worse in terms of labels complaining about using music during live streams. Definitely, like big labels, you, you you get problems with it. Usually, it's not like you get banned or anything. But after you finish your live stream, there's a video of it if people want to watch after. Like VO, uh, it's called VOD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it gets like muted if you use non-copyrighted songs. But the good news is music, like electronic music and those labels we, we like, usually they don't, they don't file complaints or they say like you can use it during live streams, we don't care. Like they, they want So do you know to... ahead of time when the ones that do and don't or do you just try it and see? Uh, I guess you can find some kind of list or of labels that, yeah, but I, can't, I just do and see what works, what, it, what it's fine and what's done. Tell me why you think live streaming is the future. I think it's the future because one, like, it's because of the chat. That's basically the main feature that's game changing for me. Because mm -hmm. you're creating content like you, like a broadcaster is doing. It's no, mm -hmm. not really that different. But at the same time, you're interacting with everyone there that wants in real to, time. In real time, that wants to interact with you. TV is changing. Like now they always have those social media comments they read and things like that, but it still is like tiny, tiny compared to streaming where while There's you're There's so like, much with, built into the app for interaction, yeah, for exactly, engagement, everything. for being yeah. built like that. And you can and and you have tools. Like people also can like buy messages that you hear on your headphones and everyone yeah. here or something that pops up in the, in the screen or audio files yeah. being played. Like everyone can contribute with 
your show basically yeah and what's cool too is like uh, you can watch people in your own hometown that are doing completely different things exactly. interesting things have their own online personality and you would never know that they're from your your hometown or they could be from somewhere completely around the world and if the content's good yeah and you relate to it you could become friends if i'm not mistaken you've become connected and close to some people that you just know through streaming exactly exactly yeah it's not the same friends that you have in the three-dimensional world as you, you have know, in the digital yeah. world. Yeah, there are people that are every night there since like the second week of streaming, then six months, seven months now, it's people are always there. So I, I created a certain type of connection for sure. What would you recommend for somebody who wants to get into streaming and wants to do that kind of uh, branding work? Is that how you, you look at it? How do you look at the streaming world? Is it a, a brand you're creating out there? Is it... Uh, is it to I make hate the word influencer, but I guess it's more like, yeah, like an entertainer, an influencer, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. 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 So, what would you recommend for somebody who wants to get into that? What's the best, you know, tricks, tips, mm. hacks that you've discovered along the way? Yeah, for me, it's uh, two things. Like, first, consistency, for sure, for sure, consistency. You have to be there at a certain time. If you say you will, you have to. In my opinion, do almost daily, if yeah. not daily, like three times, four times a week and put like a really good show. And uh, and then the other thing is also think yourself like a uh, content creator. That's something that took me a while to figure out because at first I was like, OK, I'm going to play games. I'm going to talk to people. But sometimes nothing's really going on and I'm quiet or I'm waiting for something really to happen in the game or someone say something. But People will never really tune in if you if they if they say someone just like you know just not sitting just there. sitting there. So you have to be all the time thinking about things to entertain everyone and create content, right? Okay, I kind of think of you as a curator of cool things. Okay, <laughs> but that's just because I think we have similar yeah, of course, aesthetics we that we like. Yeah, I'd like you to name me the top five. Okay. Music influences in your day, right? Let's say in the last two years top five names artists so we, yeah so artists so we can put people on to some great stuff number okay. one lane eight two uh oh recently oh cubicolor it's amazing three okay. rufus four rufus du soul rufus du soul yeah 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 exactly four uh masan i don't yeah, know how to say that in english one. but then it's it's his, yeah 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 he's he just recently. came out with an album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Hey, did you say Lane just amazing. put out a foreign some? I was mix I was tape? listening this morning. So good. I got Check to out, half of it. Check out yeah. the Lane Eight mixtape, people. Half of it. It's yeah. like boop, amazing. It's and we're gonna be producing music down yeah. the road. Just, just, just a little, just a little teaser yeah. there. But and five, number five. Oh, I should throw some Brazilian name there. Yeah, throw in a Brazilian name. <laughs> okay, there. there's this guy. Who I've been listening to a lot, and he everyone loves in Brazil. He was an eighty, like since 60s, 70s, 80s guy who does like a, a kind of funk music. Mm -hmm. It's called Tim Maia, Tim Maia, T I M M A I A, mm -hmm. and I feel like everyone here would love as well because like he's great. Okay. But it's not electronic music at all. It's just like Perfect. really Brazilian music. Yeah. As they say, there's only two kinds of music, good and bad. I totally, <laughs> I totally agree with that. Yeah. Awesome, Bernardo. Thanks for coming in the studio <laughs> and thanks for always bringing your energy and your insight and your progressive way of seeing the world to the <laughs> table here. I'm so happy that you're working with RFP Media and you're doing uh, more things all the time here. But I'm also super happy to see you doing your own thing and getting into the live streaming and committing to it and watching your audience grow because, <laughs> well, who knows where it'll lead. And exactly, uh, yeah. it's just going to be a good thing. So I hope you can teach us how to do some of that stuff too. We might not commit yeah. to that many, that many hours a day, yeah. but I think we should commit to doing a live stream out of the Sweet 16 studio here and incorporating that in what we do. So I hope you can help us do that. Perfect. Yeah, for sure. And thanks for inviting me. Awesome. Oh. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, again, tell everybody where to find you. Okay. So my website's bernardodevilla.com. Yep. My Instagram is B-E-Davilla. 
And yeah, SoundCloud, Spotify is the villa, V A V I L A. Since I have you here and you're all framed up and you're going to look great, is there anything that we could use this to bring people, bring attention to something you want to bring attention to, a shout out? We, if you want to talk about a little bit COVID, I don't know, Brazil or something. I yeah, what's going on with COVID in Brazil? It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to bring awareness a little bit for yeah. people because some people here are like, anti-vax or anti-masks yeah. and something because they don't really believe but actually there's a country like that I come from that it's people are dying it's almost like it's more than 500,000 deaths now from COVID there yeah. so in the US it's 600,000 I saw yesterday 600,000 oh wow yeah. so yeah so that shows how like some dumb leadership real. yeah takes you right so don't don't trust those kind of things and just that's my point of view at least yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's get a little political point of view in there. We can do it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, and things are bad. And just because here is not as bad, you shouldn't believe it's not. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that public service announcement. <laughs> yeah. And I appreciate you coming in, man. Thanks again. Thank you for having okay. me here. Yeah, it's always man. great. Take care. <laughs> okay, everybody. We'll see you soon. Right. Bye. Bye.